Hi, my brothers in Christ. This is Jonathan from the Hope Movement, and this is Manna for Christ. So these last couple of sessions that we talked about, um, about following the perfect pattern, referring to Christ. Then the last week we talked about um, killing pride and being humble. And so today we're going to be talking about the attributes of a real man. And um, I think this is something very interesting. Um, we look through the grand story of the Bible, um, and and this is, of course the story is about God. Um, and we we but we search oftentimes for trying these i trying to find these ideal representations of men among kings, priests, prophets, warriors, and leaders. Um, and you find that there's something not right. Sin has damaged reflection of the of ideal masculinity. Uh, one biblical hero after another is shown to be wounded and broken and flawed and um, prone to disobedient, prone to disobedience, and even to outright wickedness. Um, and yet, within the same men, we see small glimpses of masculine glory, um, un, undeterred faith, unwavering conviction, humble service, and sacrifice. Um, but again, it's they're just glimpses, um, and and so hard to to understand. Like, how could God use this guy, or was this guy really saved? I mean, it's it's truly hard to understand. But of course, if you're reading the Word of God in the proper context, you you'll have some clarity. But in, in looking at this, um, we we when we look at the scriptures, we we want to find uh, to find that you know, what that perfect pattern that we're referring to in the previous session, God breaks him, breaks him, God himself breaks into time and space. And he gives us the model of a man, his son, Jesus, the perfect divine depiction of manhood. And he, he defines true masculinity. In looking at the life of Jesus, we find countless attributes and commitments um, that show us how to live as men uh, faithful to the Father's call. If you are a man looking for a true masculinity, consider whether these nine commitments, among many others, would make a significant impact in your masculinity um, if actively applied in your role as a leader, employee, husband, father, and, and son. So number one, a man commits to following a greater authority. Jesus said, follow me. But the man said, Lord, let me first bury my father. And Jesus said to him, leave the dead to bury the de their own dead. But as for you, go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Yet another said, I will follow you, Lord. But let me first say farewell to, to those in my home. Jesus said to him, no one puts his hand to the plow and looks back. Is fit for the kingdom of God. And we find that in Luke 9, 59 through 62. And we had a session referring that about following Christ. Then two, he commits to sacrifice all else in shadow of discipleship. If anyone comes to me and does not hate his own father and mother and wife and children and brothers and sisters, yes, even his own life, he cannot be my disciple. Luke 14, 26. What we're seeing there is he's 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 setting the bar high. He's saying that you have to uh, that everything else is secondary compared to your devotion to me. Three. He commits to determined, joyful obedience. After this, many of the disciples turned back and no longer walked with him. So Jesus said to the twelve, do you want to go away as well? Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life, and we have believed and have come to know that you are the Holy One of God. John 6, 66 through 69. So a commitment, it is, it is about being being obedient and and following Christ, but joyfully, willingly, no looking back. Four, he commits to spiritual discipline, rising every morning, early in, in the morning, excuse me, while it's still dark, Jesus departed and went out to a desolate place. And there he prayed, Mark 1, 35. So a real man, he gets up early, he spends his time in prayer, he, he leaves his home and devotions. Um, he, he reads his word. Um, he works hard for his family and he dedicates um, his time to practicing spiritual disciplines. This is something very important for us to follow. 
Number five, he commits to abide in the word of truth. Jesus said to the Jews who had believed him, if you abide in my word, you are truly my disciples. And if you know the truth, the truth will set you free. John 8, 31 through 32. We must be men that are biblical in all things. Everything we should we do should be have a biblical perspective. It should say, is this biblical? Is this what do I find this in the word of God? Is my behavior being biblical? Is my thoughts being biblical? Is what what would what would God say in his word in regards to dealing with this situation? Number six, he commits to growth and production, especially spiritual fruit. By this, my father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. John 15, 8. This is the thing we we see today. We see people that go and they say, well, you know, we we're under grace. And, you know, we this person, they're they're just they're immature. They're using foul language. They're doing this and that. Um, They're just not you're, you're just not you know, they're just they just need some. We need to be some understanding and some grace. Um, but heaven forbid to say that I'm not seeing fruits from this person. I don't know if they're a believer or not. I don't know if I should be treating them as a brother in Christ or if I should be evangelizing to them. Um, and so this, this is something that's very common today, but it's very clear what the word of God says. We will know them by their fruits. And so we must uh, prove our election. We must commit to growth and production of spiritual fruit. Number seven, he commits to carry out God's mission. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. Matthew 28, 19, 20 through 20. This is something that people often look at, and um, it's something every Christian or professing Christian knows, um, but very few do. Um, the reality is that they they look at this as being a mandate um, to go and move to another country and they say, well, I don't really feel called to move to Africa or someplace like that. Um, But this is not saying that. What it's saying is wherever God gives you opportunities, whether it's in your local community, and also if he gives you an opportunity where you're able to travel to Africa or something like that, it may not be to live, it might be for a week, but you go out of obedience, joyful obedience um, for the sake of the gospel and to uh, proclaim the gospel and make disciples. Um, this is something that we must be doing. We have mission fields in our homes. We have mission fields in our neighborhoods. We have mission fields in our cities, in our states, in our country, and around the world. There's no excuse. There's abundant amount of work to be done. And as God provides opportunities, you don't try to close those doors. Um, you, you, you follow through, you go through those doors uh, willfully in obedience to the will of God. Number eight, he commits to the love of other to, to love others faithfully. A new commandment I give you, that you love one another, just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you're my disciples. And if you have love for one another, John 13, 34 through 35. This is something that I think is is lacking a lot in um, in the in the Christian um, in the body of Christ right now. Um, I think specifically when we see in social medias and things like that, where um, we we think that we have a right because of social media to be a commentator on every single topic uh, before, um, where there be theological topics or political topics that would typically happen within the uh, confines of a house uh, with family members, uh, maybe with coworkers at, at the office, things like that, um, lunch rooms, things like that. But that would be the only time you would really be having your, your opinion shared would be in those kind of environments. And in those environments, you can kind of, you can gauge and see if maybe you've crossed a line, if maybe if you're offending that person, if you're, maybe if you are saying, if you said something, you can see that person's reaction immediately. Um, and so we've, we've become desensitized now um, where we think that because of social media, we can just say whatever we think, whenever we think, uh, regardless of the consequence and regardless of what someone else is feeling, we can post whatever we can share whatever and have no, uh, empathy, sympathy, compassion, and really lacking love. Um, this is something that we we need to stop 
um, and we need to take these kind of conversations offline. Um, and and in those environments, we can show great love to people, um, even if we have to have those kind of discussions. But we can also gauge what people are feeling and interacting um, with them in a in a proper way. Um, and so we just we need to be showing love. Um, at the same time, yeah, we stand up for truth and we stand up uh, and we try to protect the gospel and we defend the gospel. Um, and we can use things like social media to um, protect um, the vulnerable um, and to uh, defend the gospel. Um, but obviously we have to make sure our heart's correct. Um, it's got to be coming from love and not from um, pride and, and, uh, and things of that nature. So number nine. He commits to brotherhood and community. Let us consider how to stir up one another to love and good works, not neglecting the meat together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another and all the more as you see the day drawing near. Hebrews 10, 24 through 25. This is something very important. It's important for us um, as, as a, the body of Christ as a whole, men, women, children um, alike, we need to be meeting together. That's why we need to be members of a local um, congregation. Um, we should be meeting together often, um, not just on Sundays, but as often as possible. And uh, we should be encouraging each other in the Word of God and through prayer. Um, and this not just through having these kind of feel good, you know, get togethers, um, but really having some some heart to heart conversations um, and really um, sharpening one another through the word of God. And as the day draws near us, as we know that the days are evil and um, and that Christ is coming soon, this should be something that we um, we just we are passionate about um, being together, working together, collaborating with one another, encouraging one another. And um, and one that doesn't do that, you will see that they will um, fall quickly into sin. And so this is something important that we are together. That's why we do this man up video. It's, it's another form of being able to commit to brotherhood and community and to be able to encourage one another. This is the whole heart behind this. So I hope that these are an encouragement. I hope that um, this nine um, could be of benefit to each one of us. Um, there's many more. And um, take the time to go through the Bible and just, just evaluate things that you see in Christ and his teachings and his life. Um, and you will find many more. And so um, I just hope this is encouragement to you. I hope you have a blessed week. Um, I hope that you uh, are used by God greatly to proclaim the gospel, to, um, to kill sin in your life, and to make disciples and lead your homes. And um, if you need prayer, feel free to send us an email. Um, keep us in prayer as well. And we look forward to seeing you next week, Lord Willie. Have a great week. Grace and peace.